right, let's talk about units. There's different parameters that we do look into in order to collect data. The first one, and one that you might be pretty familiar with, is length. Now, length you're probably most familiar with in feet or inches. But in the scientific world, we actually go based on the scientific units. And the scientific unit for the length is called the meter. And uh, technically speaking, length is tell you how much material lies on a surface, you know, or how, uh, you know, how long the surface may be. But length just kind of tells you that. And we're going to use the meter to refer to length. Then you have volume, which tells you how much something takes up in terms of space. And uh, you're probably most familiar with gallons, fluid ounces, uh, but we're actually going to be focusing on uh, cubic liters or, uh, excuse me, cubic meters. And um, another way to look at it is also the liter. The liter is the more often used uh, scientific unit in chemistry. If you actually deal with physics, you'll find out that the main scientific unit for volume is the cubic meter. And I'm going to show you later in this lecture how you go about changing between liters and cubic meters. Then you have mass, which tells you how much matter something contains. And the SI unit that chemistry uses is the gram. We'll also look at temperature as a parameter to be um, to be recorded, and the temperature we do actually focus on degrees Celsius for it. You know, so we're gonna actually show you how you go and change from degrees Fahrenheit, which is the most commonly used temperature in you know society, at least in the states, um, and then we're gonna switch to degrees Celsius, and I'll even show you a different unit, the Kelvin, which we'll also use quite vastly in this class. But this tells you how much heat there is present either at a place, in your reaction, in your molecule. The temperature is a measure of heat. Then you have pressure. This one we're gonna mostly use when dealing with gases. And so on. until we start talking about gases in this class, we really won't be touching upon pressure, but I wanna introduce it right now so you're aware of it. Pressure is uh, the amount of force that is being exerted on some unit area. And specifically, we are mostly referring to gases pressing down upon some amount of area, colliding against that area. That's what we call the pressure, force over area. And for uh, the SI units, the one that chemistry uses a lot is called the atmosphere. If you um, have taken physics, you might have also already used the Pascal. And I'll talk about that unit um, in due time. But uh, the atmosphere is by and large the one we're going to be sticking with. And the last thing, the last parameter that we do look at is time. We do record how long reactions take. Sometimes we actually get very... Uh, very in detail about how the reactions are changing as time goes by and a measurement and record of time and the changes that occur during that time frame allows us to describe not only how fast and slow a process takes but it could also allow us to ultimately figure out what's happening chemically speaking in the course of a reaction so um, all six of these parameters are pretty important but that being said time is not one parameter that we're going to be looking at. In fact, we'll concentrate on the first five, but time is something that you're going to have to wait on until you get into uh, the second part of general chemistry, in which point you'll discuss the kinetics and it'll be all about time. All right, so let's see how we go about doing calculations. And before I do that, the one thing I want to stress a lot is the use of calculators. You may have different type of scientific calculators um, at home and they're all similar but they all have little differences and so i'm going to try to point out some of the key features that you should be aware of when dealing with scientific calculators uh, first things first you have this button that either says exp or it says times 10 to the x they both represent the same uh, function. Specifically, 
when you type a number, like you type 1.23, and then you press this button, and then basically what that will tell the calculator is that your 1.23 will be multiplied by 10. And if after pressing this button, you press some other number like 5, oops, then you will end up telling the calculator this is 1.23 times 10 to the fifth. The same way that right here you can press 1.23 E5 to symbolize 1.23 times 10 to the 5. All right, so now let's take a look at some calculations. Let's say that you have two numbers. These are actually written in scientific notation. Notice that we have number, decimal point, decimal place is occupied times 10 to some exponent. So this is what we call scientific notation. And um, when you try to do this type of division, specifically due to the fact that you have exponential numbers, one thing that I need to advise you to do is to use parentheses. You need to use parentheses when carrying this type of calculation in your calculator. All right, so the parentheses is present in this key or on that type of key, but you press on that. Then you input the numbers, 2.35, right? 2.35, 2.35, 2.35. So that's pretty much the same on any of these calculators. All right, then you press the corresponding button, times 10 to the 6, e to the 6, e to the 6, whichever the case may be for your calculator. Then you close the parentheses, press on the corresponding closing parentheses key. And then you press on the division button to start the division. Now what you've basically done with the parentheses is you tell your calculator everything inside the parentheses is the number. And you will do the same thing for the second exponential number. Open parentheses, enter 3.24 times 10 to the negative 2. And then to enter this negative exponent, uh, this is a very common mistake, especially when you first start using calculators. But the negative number here you must be sure never to use the negative that you see right here in association with multiplication, division, and addition. Because this minus is exclusively used for subtractions, not for negative numbers. And so the actual digit that you have to press is the one right here. That parenthesis negative, that's the negative. Or the plus slash minus, that's your negative. Okay, so you press on that number, that will give you a negative uh, sign for your number. And then you press 2 to complete the number. All right, then you close parentheses, and finally you press enter in your calculator, or you press the button equals. And this will give you the following answer, 3.09 times 10 to the 7. If you didn't use parentheses, you will get a similar answer. You might still get the 3.09, but your exponent is going to be all messed up. And you might say, well, that's a small, that's a small mistake. That's a small difference, except that it's not. Because when you're looking at exponents, a change of a difference of four in the exponents is actually a difference of ten thousand in between these numbers. So you telling me that these two numbers are pretty similar to each other and this is a small mistake is the same thing as me telling you, well, if that's how you feel about it, then why don't you give me ten thousand dollars and I'll give you one dollar? It's the same difference, right? <laughs> well, clearly it's not, right? I, I don't think any of you are gonna give me ten thousand dollars for the exchange of one dollar, right? That's that's just not gonna happen. And the same thing goes here. If you give me 10 to the third as opposed to 10 to the seven, I'm not gonna give you credit for that. That's a huge discrepancy. Um, okay, now another button that you may use to, to your advantage, which I wanna bring up to your attention is uh, the button that says answer. Because you could actually carry out the calculation, press enter and get a number. And you may actually want to use that answer for further calculations because maybe you're not done solving your problem and that was just one step in the process of doing calculations to solve the problem. You could press the button answer to recall the previous answer that you generated in the calculator and then to that answer you can add, subtract, multiply, do whatever you want to it. Uh, and so that can save you some time as opposed to like typing the number down and then having to enter it again in the calculator before you multiply, divide it or do whatever you need to do to it. Now this calculator here is a little bit more complicated because here you might need to actually, you don't have the answer button, so instead you might need to uh, save the digits. So whatever the answer is, you might have to like add it to your memory bank. And then later on, you have to like open up the memory bank and upload the answer again that you have before to apply to some calculation. Now, I myself haven't 
dealt with this calculator in the past, so I'm not exactly sure how it works out with M+. My guess is that you just press on that button, like get an answer, press on this button, they might ask you a question and you say enter, and after that you just go and press it back to recall the number, but I could be wrong. Uh, this one is the most traditional one in calculators and it helps a lot. I use it all the time, the answer button. Uh, the other button that you need to be aware of is the mode button. The mode button will allow you to switch over from regular notation to scientific notation. So instead of having like a million three hundred sixty one seventy eight, you know, as your full number, you could actually write this in scientific notation, in which case it'll be one point two three times ten to the whatever number. I guess for the million, it will be times ten to the six. Um, and in some cases, you will probably want to have the mode in scientific notation. So just uh, get familiar with mode in order to change your um, calculator from regular notation to scientific notation. Oops, all right. Um, oh, and another thing, some calculators have this button S to D and the answers usually that, they, that you obtain from your calculator may look kind of funky. In fact, some of them may look like fractions if you want the actual value as opposed to the fraction, you have to press on this button S to D. This basically tells the calculator to exit out of the fraction format and go de directly to decimal. So in, this kind of stands for scientific to decimal, but you know, uh, I think that's a little bit uh, of a misnomer in the context of what we're talking about. But just be aware of that button. If you end up with a, an answer that is like a fraction, press on the S to D button and that will convert your fraction to a decimal number. All right, so I I'm going to do one more example before I end this video. This is the conversion factor uh, explanation. And I'm going to show you one involving meters. All right, so the conversion factor in and of itself derives from something known as an equality. The equality is simply the relationship between two um, two equivalent measurements. So for instance, three feet, which is a measure of length, is actually the same thing as one meter, which is also the same thing, a measurement of length. So these two equal each other, and as a result, you can write what we call a conversion factor. To, sim to simply state it, the conversion factor is the re rewrite of this equality in terms of a fraction. On the one hand, you could have the three feet on top of the fraction and the one meter on the bottom of the fraction, or you could have the one meter on top of the fraction and the three feet on the bottom of the fraction. And which individual conversion factor you get to use depends on the original number you're given. In this case, let's say that I tell you that the block has a length of 2.3 meters. And I want to know how many feet that corresponds to. What you have to do is start with the number you've been given, the 2.3 meters, and here's where the fractions come in. What you want to do is select the fraction that has the unit you start with on the denominator. So you want to use the left fraction here and multiply to the original number. Now the reason you want to pick the meters to be on the bottom is because when you multiply these two numbers, meters on the numerator and meters on the denominator will basically cancel out. This is almost equivalent of having like, like 2 divided by 2 cancels out, it gives you 1. So meter divided by meter gives you 1 as well. And not only that, since you also have feet in this fraction, the moment the meters cancel out, the only unit left behind is feet. And so what happens here is that you just have to multiply the numbers on top together, and 2.3 times 3 gives you 6.9 feet. And what you've basically done is utilize a conversion factor to switch from meters ultimately to feet by means of the equality that represents the equivalent uh, quantity at the two different units. All right, so I think we can probably stop at this point. In the next video, I'm gonna show you a few more examples of conversion factors and we'll go a little bit deeper than that. But yeah, let's stop at this point and I'll see you in the next video.